NASCAR scored big ratings on Sunday and Formula One continues to decline. Despite all the people in my comments telling me that NASCAR is dying, that NASCAR has been dead since 2000, nobody watches anymore, the ratings continue to go up for the sport. This past weekend in Las Vegas, they scored a great viewership number. They led all of the sporting events on Sunday with 4.359 million viewers, which topped out at just over 5.2 million viewers during that 6.30 to 7 o'clock hour on the East Coast. Massive accomplishment for Fox and for NASCAR alone. The ratings were up 9% over last year's race in Las Vegas. And despite Kyle Larson going out and doing his best Max Verstappen impression by leading 181 of 267 laps, people still tuned in. The finish was a bit compelling, and there's decent battles throughout the field all day. Despite everybody saying that this race was boring, I would argue that it wasn't. So they actually did a really good job. And granted, are we going to continue to talk about how Fox uses too many tight shots, how Boyer's annoying in the booth, that we don't care about the cartoons? Absolutely. But fans are tuning in to watch. And when you look at the numbers, the NASCAR on Fox broadcast on Sunday... The viewership-wise, obviously we know, 4.359 million viewers tuned in. Great overall. The 18 to 49-year-old demo, 847,000. So about 20% of the total viewership in that demo that everybody's coveted. Where NASCAR continues to struggle at, though, is in that 18 to 34-year-old demo, only 259,000 viewers tuned in. That means that 75% of NASCAR's viewership is age 55 and older. Not ideal. In that 18 or the 25 to 54 year old demo, you're looking at 1.2 million viewers. Uh, yeah, not ideal here. So you can kind of break that down um, to be what about 60 to 75 percent of your total viewership is over the age of 55. Not ideal. And people get mad at NASCAR for trying new things and going different places, maybe going international, going to Chicago, doing the Coliseum. NASCAR is doing that because they need to attract a younger audience. The boomers aren't going to be around forever. And when they all can, you know, start to have their unfortunate, you know, that's a problem for NASCAR because they need to backfill their audience. And right now they're not doing that. That's why they're trying to reach out and make all of these things happen and try different things to attract new viewers. And I think that they're doing a pretty decent job as it stands, but there is going to be a bit of a crisis moment as that eight, that generation starts to age out of watching live sports or anything unfortunately the good news is is nascar and fox's viewership is up seven percent this year over last year which is great obviously the rain delay daytona 500 when they ran it on monday wasn't ideal because that race probably should have brought in eight and a half to nine million viewers and it brought in around six which again less than ideal still a decent number but you knew it was going to be bigger on sunday We'll see what happens this weekend in Phoenix. Phoenix is a bit of a finicky race, but if this positive momentum can carry on, that's great news for not only NASCAR, but also for Fox as well. Who's not having a good time right now? That would be Formula One because their ratings are down once again. Last year, the ratings were down compared to 2022. This year, the ratings started down 14% compared to last year's Bahrain Grand Prix, which also began the season. Formula One was able to draw in just around 1.122 million viewers, which is okay, right? 10 o'clock on a Sunday, or 10 o'clock on a Saturday, rather. And that is worth noting. This year's Bahrain Grand Prix started on a Saturday. Last year it was on a Sunday. So did that play into the fact that the ratings were down 14%? You could argue that maybe yes. People are accustomed to races happening on Sunday. And if they're not a diehard, maybe they didn't know it was going to happen on Saturday. This weekend's race at Saudi Arabia and Jeddah will also be happening on a Saturday as Formula One observes uh, Ramadan. But the Formula One ratings aren't great. Max Verstappen going out there and dominating the races is certainly hurting the sport in America, at least. I know there's a bunch of Europeans that will be like, yeah, well, Americans just don't have the, you know, the attention span to, to accept the fact that Max is great and nobody wants to watch second place, blah, blah, blah. You eat beans on toast for breakfast, shut up. Your opinion doesn't matter. For Formula One, though, in that 18 to 49 year old demo, 441,000 viewers, uh, around 40% of their total audience was in that coveted demographic. Uh, you're still looking at, for the most, you're still looking at though, for the most part, your audience is over 50% of it, more than likely is over the age of 55, which is again, something that all motorsport brands are having to you know compete with right now and try to tackle that issue going forward. But for Formula One, a lot of people are paying attention to everything that's happening off the track. The on-track stuff, while it's fun for like the diehards like us to watch and be like, yeah, that battle for second or fourth or whatever in the mid-pack was great, 
Unfortunately, trying to get your casual fan to be interested in that is not the easiest thing in the world. Instead, they want to talk about the Christian Horner drama or the fact that the FIA president is out here trying to interfere with race results and try to get Las Vegas off the schedule for whatever reason and then lie about it. Everything about it, everybody likes the drama off track. NASCAR has nowhere near the drama Formula One does, but they have the on-track product. Formula One has a really not great on-track product, but all the drama and everything to talk about off the track. So it's a bit of a two different world situation going on here. For the most part, it's entertaining, you know, however you want to look at it. But for Formula One, they have to desperately hope that they can turn this around. I'll go ahead and guarantee that ratings for this upcoming weekend's race in Saudi Arabia are going to be down once again year over year. Part of it is Saturday. Part of it is Max Verstappen dominating. And people are like, oh, well, you know, we went through these Lewis Hamilton years and people didn't complain about as much. Yeah, there's a couple different reasons. Lewis didn't win at the same um, you know, margins that Max does. He also had a teammate that was much more competent than Sergio Perez. Sorry to Sergio fans out there. And the fact is there were other teams that were able to compete at the same time. You knew Mercedes had the best car, but Red Bull and Ferrari could step up and, you know, at least give them a decent fight. Right now, the RB20 is in a league of its own and people can't even get near it unless Sergio is driving the car. So there's a lot of things that go into that. Plus, Lewis is a much more likable person than it seems like Max is. And that's not a knock on Max. He just doesn't really have a personality. If like a gecko had a personality, I assume that's what Max Verstappen's would be like. It's just not existent. At least Lewis has, you know, he's fun. He's, you know, gives a good interview. Not that Max gives a bad interview, but he's able to like chop it up a little bit. He goes out there and does things. He's seen everywhere. And again, that's not everybody's prerogative for sure. And if Max wants to live a private life, by all means, do it. But in terms of just like likability, Lewis is just more likable than Max is for the most part. And I know there's going to be a lot of Max fans that are going to be in the comments and be like, oh, it is what it is. Sorry. I mean, even the Dutch fans are getting bored of Max's domination. They're buying less tickets. So until then, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.